recreational bodybuilders drinking human breast milk to get more gains. And so they're doing away with the cow milk, which interestingly, they don't call udder milk. They just call it cow milk. But then they call human milk breast milk. And there's people, there's this woman who's been making six grand selling her breast milk online to bodybuilders. Uh, There's this guy who said that he was having sex with his wife and was trying to distract her so that he could quickly get a bit bit of of breast milk from his wife. I wonder what like a a pint is. Because someone's made six grand, like that sounds like a lot, but is that is that just like a couple of people are re- I can't get their hands on it and they think, well, I'll pay anything? Or is she just churning out bottles of the stuff? You're wondering what the per mil cost the, is. The per pint. Yeah, it's like the you know, the question they ask politicians, how much is a how much is a carton of milk at the at the shop? It's what's what's the equivalent um going rate for a, a bottle of human breast milk. I imagine the article doesn't say that. Um let's with a link to yeah. purchase. Yeah, it'll be it'll just be a affiliate link for her Shopify. Um, okay, so there's websites onlythebreast.com, classified ads page for breast oh my milk. God. And oh, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to click on it, aren't you? It's gonna be on my history now. Here we go. Forever. Buckle in, there everyone. Be a bit awkward if that was a, a purple link. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no, the only cool. the only purple link on the page. <laughs> and then all the links in here are purple as well oh god so i'm <laughs> the add to cart link looks like i'm on a, a watch list now but there we are so originally made for women to sell to other women but now they sell okay. to bodybuilders wow it's... wow so i am convinced that the majority of people who buy this are not elite bodybuilders i think there's four groups i've been thinking about this johnny <laughs> and I, I think there's there's four groups of people who will buy human breast milk so there are recreational bodybuilders and this is the equivalent mm-hmm. of like taking no explode thinking it's the the thing that you're missing when there's actually a lot left on the table with sleep and improving your diet and everything training else. An extra day per week and yeah just everything else there's the kinky folk who are just completely unabashed just want to drink breast milk because it's their thing. And then I think number three is I reckon there are some extreme bodybuilders who actually don't fancy it. They're maybe even slightly repulsed by the idea, but they will do anything it takes to get that final couple of grams of muscle gain. If you're taking a lot of exogenous hormones, insulin, like I don't even know what else they might be taking, but but breast milk is off the table. That seems like like the wrong way around to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, you know, actually, you don't there's a question. Final so hurdle. Would you would you explore breast milk before you explored steroids? So I personally know, and the reason I think for this is the re the the the, the core value offering of human breast milk from looking into the data and i found a couple of studies on this seems to be the igf1 concentration so okay this, which is what which is Give a us the, the doctor explains simple terms what fine. is igf1 <laughs> so it's a human growth factor that is you know understandably in high concentrations in breast milk to promote a small human to get bigger bigger and so this yeah. is then being exploited by the bodybuilding community who are adult humans that want to get bigger. Um, so this it, is a... would, would that not just self-limit? So I, I assume like it's a natural process we're playing with here, like consuming breast milk. So does that mean if a, if a baby just continued drinking breast milk from, the, from the, the, huge. The, the day they started and they just don't stop, do, would they have an advantage <laughs> over another baby? I mean, your mum would be exhausted but like, well, no, now there's other ways to, to get it. So like you, you're you a baby, you decide, it. yeah, you're like, you know what? I don't want to stop. I want to keep going. Now okay. there's these websites and so there's another keep, consideration, keep on the breath. which is that you're asking me, would I, would I take breast milk as a supplement? 
it carries with it the same risks as any other body fluid from another person. So there's there's fluid borne transmission of diseases that you could get. And I, I just feel like if you're buying it online, how High risk? You know, caveat emptor. It's <laughs> you. <laughs> but well, here we go. Higher blood concentration of IGF one in Bavarian adults. <laughs> so they wow, did a that study. Is a niche study. But it does the job by the looks of it. Well, what what the job being what? Increasing IGF-1 concentrations. Yeah. Uh, right. But then I suppose, as you say, would you drink breast milk or would you just go and actually take some take, kind of... Yeah, exactly. Growth factor. Because you're just trying to like time. manipulate something there, aren't you? It's like trying to get your creatine by just eating loads of beef. It, it's exactly that. And... Does anybody do that? It's a bit Probably. of a roundabout way to go to do it, isn't it? Um, and it's pro I imagine it's the same situation of like you're trying to you're still trying to get artificially high levels of something, but you're you're doing it in a way that is natural. What however you define that. I imagine you have to drink a lot of breast milk by the time you've just consumed the same as one dose of IGF one that you would take as a an injection or however however these things are administered, I'm guessing. Yeah. Well, it's got lower protein as well than cow's milk. So does it? There's another consideration for you, but it's a weird thing to think about a human fluid as having macros associated with it. <laughs> I used to I used to have a guy, you, you know the kind of person that in class would always like draw loads of knobs on your notebook and mm -hmm. there was a guy join the Pen 15 club. Yeah, it, at uni he would love to just get hold of my phone and add a million liters of semen to my my, my fitness pal. And it would completely skew my average calorie intake for the week. And um, <laughs> it was a nightmare. What are the macros of semen? When it's a million liters, Protein? it gets quite... But what is what does my fitness pal put it in as? Like, what are the calories from as far as my fitness I think it was, yeah, a lot of protein, a lot of sodium. Then again, I, I don't... It's Delicious. a user-generated database, so we don't know how accurate yeah. it is. And as soon as you start Googling that stuff you're like retargeting your, your experience of ads on the internet is going to get quite weird quite quickly i imagine so best not to best not to if you do anything to a million liters the margin for error is really important so you've got to make sure that because otherwise yeah. those errors carry carry through and well it's, it's going to kill you isn't it? a million liters of anything is going to is going to kill you in a in a day which <laughs> in I one day is, yeah <laughs> <laughs> like you haven't got the time the means or the semen to be able to consume a million liters. I'm not sure that a million liters of semen exists in because five mils per ejaculate um, <laughs> on average. Let's say if you got every man in the world to try and produce as much as possible, like t let's say 25 mils in a day times. It'll definitely exist. Four billion. Four. Well, st straight away. Seven zeros. Okay, okay. that's actually yeah. a, a billion liters of semen. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, that's a billion. No, that's a billion mils. It's exactly a million liters of semen. So that's every <laughs> human in the world producing wow. the maximum possible. And you're assuming five per day, five events per day. So the reason I've said five <laughs> is that you will have some people that are unable to produce semen. You might have people who are too old, too unwell. Oh, wow. These things were all considered in... 25 mils per day i get that wasn't just off the cuff uh it'd probably be five well because you're it, you're gonna have these absolute beasts that can just 12 15 yeah so yeah the it's gonna be a note, real team effort isn't it this then if, yeah it'd be so how expensive would that be to coordinate like even trying to vaccinate the whole world was well i don't enough. know i feel like you're getting people to buy into something that's fairly beneficial for them what well, one what person mean? has to go and drink it and then die so Oh right, yeah. It's yeah. That's a good point. I just like, don't think like what is the even even stretch to its limits, what's the content? How much can a human stomach manage? Like it, it's gonna be ten liters maybe. <laughs> maybe. Even like, I think ten you're getting into dangerous territory with yeah. um diluting. But I'm talking about much. like but well but we're talking about it's it's dangerous because this person's gonna die. So we're not worried about that. We're worried about the physical constraints that we're up against. 
before you just start throwing it up again. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's a very valid Disgusting. point. Disgusting. So if these people didn't drink human milk, we would never have to have to have spoken about this. So exactly. It's it's completely their fault, to be honest. Just eight eight hours of sleep, four sessions a week, whey, creatine. Well, hit your protein, consider things like creatine, multivitamin, ZMA. So on that note, I think the fourth group, fourth and final, we've got recreational bodybuilders, kinky folk extreme advanced bodybuilders and then i think we've got people who masquerade as bodybuilders but are actually part of group two the yeah. kinky folk but they're just a bit ashamed to say they don't want to talk about it and you raised the possibility of if it was packaged as a supplement mm -hmm. would that change the game and i think it would because there's not as much of it it's the same as like you pour milk on your cereal but you'd feel a bit weird like sucking it out of a cow's teat even though it's the same thing Unless that so, was convention. Yeah. Unless that's what everybody did. But yeah, you like we spoke about this yesterday of if as soon as my protein bring it out and what did you call it? So if it was called like Breast Max Elite. Well yeah. it'd be Breast Max for the standard one and then you said In the, the black packaging that's been screened for all the people on the internet that have things in their breast milk that you don't want to consume. You have to pay an extra twenty quid. <laughs> but yeah, the um as soon as, because I think if you think about any of the supplements that are sold that people think nothing, never think twice about, if something came to the door in a brown packet from my protein or any of these brands, I just assume there's so much quality control in these companies that it's fine. It does make me worry because you, when you get the regular creatine and then you see that they, they've launched Crea Pure and it's 99.1% pure, it's, you're like, well... What's my creatine then? Like, yeah. All, well, all so Chris, is... Chris, Chris mentioned this to me about get the Crea Pure because it comes in capsules rather than tablets, and I can't find it on the My Protein website. Unless so they, unless it's all Crea Pure now, they got rid of all the ones that's laced with all sorts of rat poison and impurities. Stuff and... <laughs> yeah, you, you've never it's... been drug tested. No, I can't believe that. Not once. You, you managed Just to get to enough. worlds and. Yeah, but when you come like in the bottom half at Worlds, they're not going to drugs test you, are they? Why would they bother? I suppose they're not a very well-funded institution, are they? So I think it's also changed now. So that was like back in 2015. So I think that the rules and the regulations around drugs testing, because there was something about the US, USAPL weren't conforming to WADA's drugs testing. I think they were testing too often or something like that. So now the USAPL have... Um, been hived out of of the ipf and are now doing something else but the drug testing's definitely changed but yeah i didn't get drug tested but you did because you went to egbra power station <laughs> with delt delt striations and tricep separations and the guy with the blazer and the red badge on the clipboard watched everybody else come up and take their deadlift watch you take your deadlift and watch your shoulders like flare and pop out as, as the bar leaves the ground and things that guy's on drugs <laughs> <laughs> just because I shouldn't really have been in that weight category. I yeah, was, it, you were just in, weren't you? Were you like, oh, was, that yeah. was that the 74s? Yeah. You were in the 74s. And I, I weighed in at 73.95 after dehydration. After like going backwards and forwards. <laughs> oh my God. You were, you, are, you were the leanest I've ever seen you by a mile. It was such an unpleasant time of my life. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's anyone's listening and has been that lean you'll instantly be like oh yeah i know that headspace it's grim can we get a photo pop up of you you being that lean yeah i actually have one here somewhere um it was when we were checking in we were both being coached by eric helms at the time we were checking in weekly and we were both reverse or you were you were cutting i was reverse dieting and i remember we were both in the phase where we were getting like calories added so we're getting like carbs added each week and we would both sit, sit with the amount of carbs that we thought eric was going to add next <laughs> to the laptop waiting for the email oh. and then like the email would come in and go like hey man we had five ten grams carbs. Like, oh my god and you're like, yes. <laughs> straight oh, in. I, that, that that has uncovered a memory that i'd mm. a, a trauma, Awful. traumatic memory i'd forgotten there which yeah exactly so that was useless pancreas by the way if anybody missed that <laughs> just flashing up my pancreas yeah. <laughs> Goodness that was insane, me. man. It, I mean, the, the experience of being drug tested is a whole kettle of fish. Is that right? It's a whole kettle yeah. of fish. It involves, you finish your deadlift, as you said, the man with the blazer goes, son, 
coming with me. I think you better you come to, with me, son. And you have to go into the toilet, and then he watches you at waist level, we into a jar. Eye to eye, as it were. Eye to eye. <laughs> as, <laughs> as a way to make sure that you're not concealing urine in your rectum and passing it through a prosthesis, which I think to do a max deadlift in that situation with a pouch of urine in your rectum would be, that would impact my performance negatively, I think. It depends Probably how much you care about. Yeah. It depends how much you care about the urine staying in the bag, I guess. Because I think it's going to impact your performance because... So just to give an explanation that everybody's fully clear on what the way people have historically got around drug testing is bag of urine up your bum. Everything else is fake. And then you, you, you get taken straight off the platform as soon as you've done your third deadlift. So you do your third deadlift, get taken straight into this room and then you squeeze your bum, fake urine, drug free urine comes out into a pot. You hand that to the drug tester. You pass your drug test while being on drugs. But you've obviously got a deadlift with that up your bum. And I see. And so it's to stop you from doing your deadlift, quickly running to the toilet, then putting something yep. in your bum and exactly. then doing the drugs test. Yeah. yeah. But most people squeeze their bum when they deadlift. I think that's fair to say. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think I'm calling anybody does. out. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> I think, it, you know, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? It's heavy. Especially the third one. It's, it's the heaviest you can do. So you'll you probably it would probably come out of the bag and go down your leg, which is fine as long as you're not going to get drug tested. Yeah, that is true. But you passed your drug test. We should say that. I yeah, I passed it. I think it was six weeks, and and you you know you going through. You sat there it. nervous, and you, oh maybe the the impact way rhubarb and custard that mm. was three years out of date. Maybe like because of because of the fermentation process of it being in my cupboard. It's just turned into trend and custard. <laughs> <laughs> Diana Ball and custard. <laughs>